Basically, since the day I started using Linux, I've been running Arch Linux using the stable kernel. That is the kernel you get if you install the package just titled Linux on Arch or any of the Arch-based distros. It may be different on random other distros, be sure to check for those. And while this package is probably the most popular version of the kernel, it's by no means the only option we have available, and that's just focusing on what is available on an Arch-based distro without considering all of the other random things that may be packaged. So just to keep this video under 10 hours long, I'm going to be focusing on the kernels that are available officially on Arch Linux, and a couple of really interesting ones also available inside of the AUR, because while they're not official kernels, a lot of them do have really interesting use cases. So on Arch Linux, we have four kernels available, and even if you don't run Arch Linux yourself, some of these might sound familiar because they're not just available on Arch. So we have the stable kernel, the LTS, otherwise known as the long-term support kernel, the hardened kernel, and also the Zen kernel. So let's just start from the start and talk about what the stable kernel actually is. Now, while being directly related, the stable kernel available on Arch Linux or probably whatever other distro you're running isn't going to be identical to the stable kernel available from the kernel archives. It's going to be very similar, and that's because the stable kernel available on Arch Linux is actually built directly from this source code. But the Arch team also applies some extra patches to it and makes some minor modifications to it, and this is why when you actually download the kernel on Arch, it's not always going to be directly up to date with what is available from this website. Because Arch is a rolling release, it's probably not going to be that far behind, but there is always going to be a bit of a delay. Now, LTS, the long-term support kernel, might lead to a bit of confusion because you used to see a lot of distros out there also referring to themselves as LTS distros. Take something like... I don't know, Ubuntu LTS. And while they are both going to be running a version of the LTS kernel, when you install an LTS kernel on Arch Linux, this doesn't mean that Arch then becomes a stable release. None of your other packages change, Pac-Man will keep updating everything else exactly the same. And contrary to popular belief, it also doesn't mean the kernel is just not going to be updated for a very long time. In fact, you might just see the exact same update pace as the regular stable kernel. So when I planned out this video about two or three weeks ago, the latest version of LTS was 5.10.74. Now the latest version is 5.10.76. Now, 5.10 might sound like a kind of out-of-date kernel, and if you go all the way back to the oldest version of the LTS currently available, 4.4, that was the current version of Linux, I don't know, like, a couple of years ago. So, feature set-wise, the kernel is incredibly out-of-date, but that's the whole purpose of using LTS. You want the feature set to stay exactly the same, so that when you're building something around it, you know it is always going to work. But that does not mean the kernel is actually out of date when it comes to things like security. So pay attention to the third version number. When you have something as a stable release, you'll never see a .76 or a .214 or a .290. This means there has been 290 minor patches addressing things like security to make sure these older LTS kernels are still, you know, secure to use. Basically, anytime a security vulnerability is discovered, those will be backported to the older LTS kernels to make sure they're still safe to use. For most desktop users, the LTS kernel doesn't really make that much sense. What it's made for is running, say, a web server or you're doing some research work where having your software always work exactly the same way is really, really important. Our next kernel is the Linux hardened kernel, which for Arch Linux is going to be forked from the one being used by Graphene OS. Now, like Arch Stable, the hardened Linux kernel is also built against the Linux stable release. As we can see down here, the latest version is 5.14.15, and over on the kernel archives, the latest version of Stable is also 5.14.15. 
What we mean by hardened is strengthening security at a kernel level. The way this is done is by taking the stable kernel release, applying a kernel patch set, along with disabling some of the other features through the kernel compile options. And while a lot of these features might be incredibly useful if you're on a server or if you're on the desktop, if your focus is on security, they don't really need to be enabled because they basically just act as extra points to exploit the system. So if you use the hardened kernel, it is going to come with a performance detriment. How big that detriment is, is going to depend on what you're doing and obviously how powerful your system is, but there will be a detriment. Also, certain packages, most notably Skype, which for whatever reason will not work with the hardened kernel. Other things may have some issues. Other things like the NVIDIA drivers may require some workarounds to actually get working. Now, as for the Zen kernel, this has absolutely nothing to do with AMD Zen. That is just a coincidental name. Like with the hardened kernel and like with the Arch stable kernel, this is also built against the Linux stable kernel. And the GitHub does an absolutely horrible job at telling you why you might want to use the Zen kernel. In fact, it does no job at doing that. So let's look at the Liquorix kernel, which is based on the Zen kernel. So the way it describes itself is as the better distro kernel. So rather than just being focused on being a generic kernel that works on everything, it doesn't really have any specialized use case. This is focused on the regular Linux users who are, you know, consuming media, who are running the Linux desktop, who are gaming, things like this. And as such, includes a patch to support F-Sync, which in short, basically can lead to lower CPU usage when you are running games through a system like Wine or Proton. It doesn't always lead to better performance, but in some cases, it can lead to an FPS gain. Along with a focus on responsiveness over power usage and throughput, however, that doesn't mean that if you run it on a laptop, your battery is just going to die straight away. I've seen some anecdotal reports of better battery life on Zen, and also not enabling features that you just do not need on a desktop, things that are sort of enabled just for server usage. Now, recently, I have been testing Zen myself. I haven't used it enough to really say whether it's actually better or not, but when I have got all my thoughts together, expect a video on that. Now, going over to the Arch Wiki, you'll see a big list of kernels that are both officially supported. Those are the ones we covered earlier, along with a list of kernels also available in the AUR that are certainly at least somewhat worth checking out. So all of the kernel.org kernels are going to be available in the AUR, so downloading those are really, really simple. And one of those you may want to think about using is the Git kernel. Not because the Git kernel is going to be great to run on your desktop, but the Git kernel is here to basically test the absolute latest version of the kernel. This will be compiled directly from the source available on the Linux repo. No extra patches, nothing like that. Whatever is in that repo is going to be there. This is more here for testing and development purposes, but if there is some weird edge case where you're running some absolute cutting edge hardware, maybe you might need that. While the Git kernel is going to be the latest code available from the repo, the next kernel is actually kind of a more interesting one. This is effectively a beta test for the next mainline kernel. So the next kernel is going to include features that are going to be merged into the next major release. Now, in the unofficial kernel section, there is a bunch of stuff you can look into here. Some of them might be good for your use case, some of them won't be. But the Libre kernel is one that you may have already heard of. So the Linux Libre kernel is the same kernel that is used over on Parabola. This is a kernel that's not going to include any proprietary or obfuscated device drivers. Which, as you may expect, when there is not replacements available, the Libre kernel is going to break a lot of hardware. That doesn't mean that everything is going to break. You can use Parabola perfectly fine, but you will have to sort of pick and choose what hardware you're actually going to be using. And obviously, you could always just go and compile your own kernel if none of the kernels available do what you need them to do. Now, the big question is,
what kernel should you actually be using? And I really can't answer that question for you. It completely depends on your actual use case, and most people will get away perfectly fine just running the stable kernel. So all I can really say to you is do your research, try out the kernels that you think are going to work, try to find people who are, you know, in similar cases to you and see what they are using. And hopefully you'll find something that suits your use case basically as close as you want. And if not, well, maybe try compiling yourself. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, I don't know where I was going to point there, go to my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>